Greetings and welcome back. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond This Games. And in this third part, we are going to start getting the choices for our dialogue system set up. So let's go ahead and dive right on into it. First thing we're going to do is go into our robot and we're going to set up a couple of things that the player will be able to choose from. So zero zero is what is displayed when you first talk to the robot. Now zero one and two is what is going to be shown. And I want to create four different options. So I like sunny days. And bite me. Okay. So now we have four options on top of this. So this array length or the array height of um, this 2D array for zero is five because we've got zero to four. Now the way we're going to check this is basically just saying if the height of zero or index one is greater than zero, then that means that the there are options for the player to choose from. We're going to check that by coming in here and we're going to create a variable inside of the dialog system, another global variable. It's going to be called has choices. And inside the script, we're basically going to do exactly what I just said. So it is going to check to see if the array height is greater than zero. And if it is, then choices will be true. And I'm going to put that up here. So I'm going to say if array length 2d and we're going to say message giver dot my dialogue and then I'm going to say index uh, index one is greater than one and if it is then has choices will be true else has choices will be false. So it says array length 2D here, that's the function that we're using. And the way it's used is you send it a variable, which is the my dialog, and then you send it an index inside of there. So I'm sending it index, well, when we start it'll be index zero, but it can change over time. So you'll be able to have a conversation and then eventually end it because the player will have nothing to choose from. So we've got that in place. And so the next thing we want to do is come into the object dialog box and inside the step event, we're going to uh, set this up so that if there are choices, we're going to call another script we're going to create that will show those choices and set them up for us. So we're going to keep this part the same right here. Um, <clears throat> but then we're going to come down and say, so we have if the message index is greater, so it is checking it, but we want to come in and add one more check. So we're going to say, and, and we'll say, and exclamation point has choices. Now with the exclamation point, don't forget you could say, and not if you wanted to. Um, I'm used to just using exclamation points there though. It's the same thing saying that if has choices is equal to false. That's another way you could write it. So if message index is greater than where we are, so that means that we are at the end of the message to display and we don't have choices, then we're gonna keep the same thing here. Else if message index greater than or equal to, and it's gonna be the same thing here. So we're actually just gonna copy and paste and then delete this exclamation point because we want it to say if it does have choices then what we want to actually do is well first off okay this will stay the same because we still need to destroy the dialog box because we don't want it in place anymore unless you did then I suppose you could keep it but I'm gonna say like you've seen the dialog and you're ready to choose from the options and we're gonna say script show choices and that's what we're going to call. So let's go to scripts and let's make a new script. Name it that exactly, script show choices. And then it shows up perfectly. Great. So let's go ahead and run this and make sure that it is going to work properly because it should go to this else if statement because we will have choices properly. Okay. 
Perfect. So it destroyed the dialog box, but I can't move, which means that it did go to this else if statement, but our script currently does nothing. So let's work on that. Let's go into the object choice box, and we're going to add a create event here, and we're going to drag in some code, because what we need to do next is set up the object choice box very similar to the object dialog box in that it is going to show its own message, and it's going to know when it has been selected, and it's going to handle that kind of code for us. So we're going to add a variable called my message, max length and max height same kind of thing it's going to display the message for us again so we're going to add a draw event as well i'm sure you can see where we're going to go with this we can actually come into the dialog box again and we can just copy over this let me show this so the only thing that we're going to want to change is we don't want a message index here so in my message delete the message index for the object choice box because it's just going to display the line of text that it is. Uh, if you have an option that is multiple lines or multiple text boxes long, then you're going to need to use a larger sprite than what I've got because that's not what I've got set up here. I think that the response should be fairly short and to the point. All right, now that we've got the choice box set up, we're going to come into the dialog system one more time. And in the create event, we're going to add in a, another variable called choice box. And this is going to be another array that we are going to set up inside of our script. So create choices for player. Inside of here, we are going to use a for loop and we are going to create all of the choice boxes. And we're going to start with i equal to 1, and I'll show you why in just a second. But it's going to be i is less than array length 2d, and you've seen this before, index 1. Okay? And then we're going to increment i. Now, again, array length 2d, because we want to make a choice box for each of the available choices that we made inside of the robot so it had four choices and we're starting at one because we don't want zero because that's the initial message that is displayed to be shown as a choice because that wouldn't make any sense so we're starting at one and it'll go to four and that'll be creating all of the things for us so first thing we're going to do is we're going to increment index two because index two is still starting at zero and we want it to be at one now and we're going to do choice box, and it'll be i minus 1 equals instance create. And it's going to be, I'm going to put two, two parentheses right here because I'm going to be doing something. I'm going to do i times 210. And these are dimensions that I have worked with to get this specific sprite set working. View h port, view current, divided by 2 obj choice box so this i minus one well why don't we start at zero you might ask remember we're starting at one because that is the first option that the player will have to choose from this choice box i minus one is simply because the choice box array we want to start at zero when we're using it because that just makes the most sense again Follow along, and once we get this up and running, I'm hoping it'll make sense, if you're confused at all. So with the choice box, and we need to say i minus 1, because that's the one we want to access. So inside of the choice box, we're going to set the max length. And again, it's going to be sprite width minus 48. Max height will be sprite height minus 48 very similar and we're going to set my message equal to message giver dot my dialog and this will be index one and index two and you, you can see here that index two started at zero but we automatically increment it to one which is the first option for the player 
So then we've got zero one being the message for the first choice box, which starts at zero index. And then we do that for each one. So each choice box will know exactly what it should be saying and what it should be displaying. And I'm also gonna set image speed equal to zero, which might not make any sense, but if we go in and look at this, it actually has two images inside, and you probably never noticed that because no reason to. But this image on this image one, that's what's going to change color to once it's the selected choice. That way, uh, the player knows which choice he is currently selecting. It's just a way to know. Um, and we, if the image speed is not set to zero, it's going to switch between those at 60 times per second, which would be very silly and disorienting. And then we're going to come back into the dialog system because we need to have a few more variables now. And the reason I'm doing it like this and not doing it all at once is because I want you to see uh, the creation of the variables, what they're used for, and then come back and go back and forth. Otherwise, uh, you would just be watching me type out the whole project at once instead of in working pieces. And I feel like this is the best way to learn is seeing how it works chunk by chunk. So we want to come up and we want to say showing choices and uh, current choice. Now showing choices will be for when the choices are actually displayed on the screen because it's important to know that. And current choice will be what choice the player is actually selecting currently. And we want that to be a global variable because we're going to actually handle that inside of the dialog system. But come up here back to the showing choices script and put showing choices equal to true because now it is okay great we're going to add a step event inside of the dialog system now and <clears throat> we're going to choose the control of the dialog boxes so add some code and let's go ahead and run this really quick just to be safe because it's always good to run code make sure that there's no current errors at the moment. We should see some choice boxes being created. Press start and bam, look at that. Now we have the choice boxes in there, the text is on them, we can't select them, we can't do anything else right now so we're stuck, but this is a very good start. If you wanted to keep the dialog box down here, yeah, I suppose that would work, or you could have these displayed at the bottom or the top. This is just the way I've done it. Hopefully that doesn't throw you off too much. So inside of the step event for the dialog system now, we're going to set up the choosing of the options. So choosing a choice. And in here, we are actually going to control it by uh, moving through the choice box system. And this, uh, get, this is gonna get a little complicated as well. So bear with me. Here we go. So if we are showing choices, that's gonna be the overarching thing because if we didn't have this, uh, the choice box array wouldn't be created and we would just get an error right off the bat. So we can only be checking this thing when we are showing choices. So we're gonna say for i equals zero, i is less than array length 1d of choice box and increment i. Now, what we're gonna do in here is actually set all of the choice boxes, their image indexes, and we're gonna set them to zero, which again is the green one. So while we're looking, the, the first step will be setting them all to zero because then once we've chosen one, we'll set that one's image index to one and the precedence will be set them all to green, but then set the one that's chosen to red and that takes place after this code. So the way that GameMaker uh, starts from the top going to the bottom of the code that it runs will make sure that the one we have selected is red and all of the other ones are green at all times. So we're gonna use the keyboard here. And we are gonna say VK right or, that's what the two pipes are, you can say or, I use the double pipes, same thing or keyboard check pressed ord d 
And I'm just going to set this up so that you can choose either one of them. So now we're going to set uh, current choice equal, and we're going to use a new function here called clamp. And the clamp function uh, just returns a value within range of minimum and maximum. So the way this works is we're actually going to say increase current choice. So if current choice is zero, this is going to say move current choice to one, but the minimum that it can be is zero, and the maximum that it can be is choice box minus one. So let me show this whole line here and explain this for a second. So current choice will equal current choice incremented by one as long as it is not greater than the entire array length because we don't want to be able to go outside of the array length. Otherwise, we will get an error right away. And you need to do minus one here because the array is actually four, it's four long and it's gonna return four, but uh, our current choice needs to start at zero. And so the way a computer counts and the way we count are two different things. This function I wish would just return, you know, differently, uh, but it is the way it is. It starts counting at one, so if there are four, it'll go one, two, three, four, even though we start at zero, one, two, three. So if you try to plug in a four into a variable that has an array index of three at the largest, you're gonna get an error right off the bat. So if you get any... So if you get an error with that, check that you've got the minus one. Now we're going to check for VK left or A. And this is basically the exact same thing, except we're going to decrement it with two minus signs. It's going to be subtracted by one because we don't want it to go lower than that. And then right here, we're going to say choice box current choice that image index is equal to one which means that at the end of this code the one that is currently selected will be red let's go ahead and check this out we got an error right here so something has not been set before reading it so showing choices is not currently set so let's take a look at this Step event, line one, two, mm -hmm. Ah, so inside of <clears throat> dialog system, we need to set this because it's checking it immediately. So showing choices set to zero and current, ch oh, sorry, got ahead of myself. Showing choices equal to false. Current choice set it to zero. Uh, that will allow the program to actually run properly. All right, here we go. Let's see what happens. Perfect. So you can see that only one of them is ever going to be read at the same time. I can't go above or beyond or below the array. I can't get an error this way. Now, we're not doing anything just yet but we have displayed the choices and in the next part we are going to run through how to actually choose one of those and then move to the next line of dialogue that would coincide with the chosen option. I think I've come up with a pretty clever way of setting this up so I hope you will join me for part four of this dialogue system in GameMaker Studio. As always, have fun making great games, and I will talk to you next time.